And um, what you mentioned something about uh, a silent heart attack. What do you mean by that? And how does someone know that they had a silent heart attack? It's a good question. So it is, you know, as I mentioned, 20% of all heart attacks are silent. So I think that people may have symptoms and may just brush them aside. So for example, they may for a couple of days just feel kind of lousy. They had this chest pain and they just kind of wrote it off as like having a cold and they were a little short of breath. And then, you know, a few weeks later, they may, they may feel perfectly fine. Or a few weeks later, they may feel even worse and lousy. So you know, again, you know, people may not necessarily be listening well to their bodies and they may have symptoms of, of a heart attack and may not even realize it. That said, there are certain conditions such as diabetes where you don't necessarily have the, the nervous system of, of others and you may actually have a heart attack and literally just feel feel nothing at, at the time of the heart attack. And then, okay, and then how do you, how do you know in retrospect though that you had one? Is there... In retrospect, you can know um, an EKG, a simple EKG can demonstrate abnormalities suggestive of that, an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart, or even if one were being more invasive, a coronary angiogram could show an artery that may have been completely blocked off. Great. Thank you. Given the correlation between um, weight and heart disease, what are your thoughts on bariatric surgery for weight loss, as well as the diabetic drug Ozempic? Okay. So weight loss, um, for somebody who is obese, weight loss will help to lower blood pressure. It will help to lower cholesterol, presuming that the weight loss is achieved with, with a healthy diet. Um, there is some data on bariatric surgery or surgery to specifically lose weight. And there have been good, good outcomes in, in some of those studies demonstrating that there is reduced risk of heart disease, reduced risk of, of diabetes after a bariatric surgery procedure. Okay, thank you. Um, what is the ideal cholesterol? And, and also um, some, some of the doctors that, that we've had um, over the past week have um, said that higher cholesterol is good for brain functioning. So there's, you know, there, we're hearing low cholesterol for heart, good, you know, higher cholesterol right. for the brain. What are your thoughts on the ideal cholesterol and that? Dichotomy? Right. There is no mainstream peer reviewed science that suggests that you need to have a high cholesterol level for your brain to function. Um, there are populations of people who are born with abnormal genes, for example, an abnormality in the PCSK9 gene that just based on their genetics have exceedingly low cholesterol levels. And this, these populations don't have problems with brain function, and they actually have much lower risks of, of heart attacks and strokes. So um, I don't think that we need to have high cholesterol to have the brain function. Okay, thank you. Um, and what are your thoughts on the, the keto diet? There are authors out there, you know, doctors writing books, um, pushing the keto diet. And um you know, what are your thoughts on the evidence that they provide for, for the keto diet? The ketogenic diet was initially designed for children with epilepsy. Um, and that's where it functions well to reduce the risk of seizures in, in, in a specific subset of children with epilepsy. Now, um, ketogenic diets for weight loss, they they will lead to loss of weight, but the way in which they achieve that weight loss is with a diet that is very high in in saturated fats, um, you know, from from animal products, which in general increases cardiovascular risk. So, an animal based ketogenic diet is going to increase risk of of heart disease. Okay, thank you. Um, approximately how many patients have you seen, uh, for heart disease and, and treated with a plant-based diet and, and what percentage has gotten better through the plant-based diet protocol? I would say that just about everybody that has adopted a whole food plant-based diet has, has done very well, um, and been event free since adopting that whole food plant-based diet. In other words, hasn't needed another stent, hasn't had a heart attack or a stroke. I mean, there's one patient I can think of off the top of my head who adopted a plant-based diet 
and then went on to have progression of, of, of his disease, but he's also somebody who wasn't taking the aspirin and the statin that was recommended um, for him. Great, thank you. Yeah, I, I believe you mentioned uh, supplements earlier in your presentation. What what are your thoughts? Um, you know, during the talks, curcumin came up. I think you mentioned some other some other um, supplements. What do you think of curcumin? What do you think of other supplements? What would you say that the top ones that we should uh, be looking to add into our our lifestyle? Um, in general, um, I mean, there are supplements that are that are available that can that can promote health. So there are supplements that may contain bergamot, for example, that definitely can, can lower cholesterol. Curcumin definitely has its effects as an anti-inflammatory. As for whether or not, I, I don't know that I would recommend that everybody needs to take one of those things, but they, they are things that, that do have benefit. I think more important than any one individual's over-the-counter supplement is the is in general what our diet is and how much we move and how, how well we manage our stress. Those are far more important than choosing to add particular supplements to our diet. Great. Thank you. So we, we often hear cholesterol and triglycerides kind of mentioned in the same breath. Um, what, what's the ideal number for triglycerides? What's the, the difference between triglycerides and cholesterol? Um, does it tell us anything different? Um, right. So triglycerides are the fat in the blood. Um, the laboratories that check these tend to suggest that a triglyceride level under 150 is ideal. And I think that, 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 that is, is reasonable when it comes to LDL cholesterol in general, lower is, is better. Um, however you, you achieve that, whether that be with lifestyle alone or with lifestyle plus medication. Great. Thank you. Um, so many speakers recommend no salt. A few of them recommended some salt in their diet, but many of them say no salt. There's a book out called The Salt Fix, which recommends salt. Um, it says, uh, you know, so it, it says the salt is is good. What are your thoughts on salt? Should it be avoided? Should it be, um, is it something that we don't need to consider? Is it something that uh, that we definitely need to consider? Well, a high sodium diet should definitely be avoided. So minimizing foods that are higher in salt, restaurant foods, um, those are, you should definitely be minimizing those higher salt foods. Um, whether or not you need to go to an exceedingly low level of sodium, the answer is probably no. And there've been some recent studies that have, that have looked at that question, particularly with heart failure patients, um, that we don't necessarily need to be super low on, on salt. Is super low okay? I, I think it depends on, on the person. Honestly, if you feel unwell on, on a diet that is exceedingly low on salt, then that may not be the right thing for you. Okay. Thank you. Um, you had mentioned um, smartly processed foods like tofu and milk. What do you mean by smartly processed? I don't know that I said milk as I, I may have oh, said. No, 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 yeah, plant, plant. I'm sorry. Plant. Plant -based milk. Yes. Yeah. So smartly processed means like foods that have a minimal amount of processing. So taking soybeans and turning them into tofu or turning them into to soybeans, as opposed to, you know, heavily processed things like potato chips that go through several steps and are dried out and salted and whatnot. So, or foods that have a lot of added oils and, and salts and, and sugar to them. So minimally processed or smartly processed. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna talk about medical school. So uh, does medical school, you know, so supposedly like Michael Greger did a uh, um, some videos on this, uh, saying that um, that doctors actually have less information about or are less correct on nutritional information than the general public. What are your thoughts about what kind of information medical students are getting on on nutrition? Um, is it is it accurate or is is it industry biased or or is it just lacking? It's a good question. I can recall back in the day when I was in medical school, it's been more years than I care to admit. I, I finished medical school in 1999. We did actually have a nutrition course. It was throughout our first and second years of medical school. It was fairly limited in scope. And the focus was more on nutritional deficiencies and individual micronutrients and less focused on the um, the, the, the diet of the Western world and the diseases that it can contribute to. 
there's a lot that has to be covered in medical school and the the board examinations that need to be taught to. Um, so unfortunately, the excuse is that there's not a lot of room in the medical school curriculum for, for nutrition. I think that unfortunately, a lot of the medical schools still do not provide much, if any, education about nutrition. So as a consequence, um, doctors can get through medical school not knowing too much about nutrition. I would say that what, what I've learned has been you know, mostly what I've learned on my own, pursued knowledge on my own, as opposed to what I had learned through my, my medical training. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so in the vegan community, B12 is, is considered very important. There's a little bit of a controversy of what the best kind is. One, do you recommend a B12 supplement to your plant-based patients and what is the best kind for, uh, for people to take? I do recommend that my patients do, who are on a strictly vegan or strictly plant-based diet should be taking a, a B12 supplement um, as part of their, their daily nutrition. Um, as for specific B12, I, I honestly don't recommend one, one versus another. Mm -hmm.